from the Neller Center on the campus of Clark University in Worcester, Massachusetts, Charter TV3 presents live coverage of the 79th Annual Clark Tournament. Tonight, it is the first of our two large school semifinals as the Groton Dunstable Crusaders square off against the Westboro Rangers. Hello, everyone. Welcome inside the Neller Center. Kevin Shea alongside of Kevin Wells. What a matchup we have tonight. Westboro, Groton, Dunstable, two teams with identical records, two teams that split two regular season meetings. What's going to be the difference here tonight? Well, first of all, we've had two early games with the small schools that were just fantastic. I expect two great games this evening. So that being said, the difference, maybe this stage right tonight, Kevin, because if people are pulling the trigger a little bit too much, they're not extending their hands, it can make a difference. You've got to value the basketball. Both coaches know each other exceptionally well. All the players know each other. There's no hidden secrets. Who's going to execute? Who's going to run their offense? Who's going to make things happen? and value the ball and rebound. That's about it. Certainly could be a great one tonight. Could be one for the record books. It is Groton, Dunstable, and Westboro. We're back with the opening tip-off right after this. Doors. Every door is different. Every door, unique. And each one tells a story. Open a door at Unibank and you'll find a unique place. A bank where we listen to you and find answers all to help you write your unique success story. Welcome to the new Unibank. Please, after you. Unibank, bank different, bank unique. Member FDIC, member DIF, equal housing lender. What's up, I'm Tom and this is Two Things with Tom. Thing number one, Worcester Railers hockey is family fun. Bring the family and have a blast at the DCU Center in Worcester. Thing number two, Worcester Railers hockey is wicked affordable. Railers tickets start at just $15. Enjoy a great night out with your family or friends. Hockey is back. Hockey is back in Worcester. Give us a call, go to railershc.com and come see us at the rink. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Just like in baseball, good sports reporting relies on the bullpen. There are days when our front man just doesn't have his stuff anymore. What is he doing? This is rude. I think it's Grafton. It could be Bartlett. It's a green and white team. Don't have it. You're done. Son of a bitch. I fucking have it. Tell me I don't I can still bring it. Yes. Time. All right, that's actually Bartlett versus Milbury, and it's Todd Deshane from I'm just glad I can be a role guy here. You can't get Worcester weather from a Boston TV station. The sun could be shining in downtown Boston, but the weather could be very different here in Worcester. People tell me all the time how much they count on our weather forecast, and we know how important that is to our Worcester News Tonight viewers. Each weekday, we'll give you your weather, your 10-day forecast for right here in Worcester, only on Worcester News Tonight. Worcester's only local forecast, weeknights on Worcester News Tonight. Okay, so here we go, back to the Neller Center. 
playing of our national anthem as we get set for this first of two semifinals tonight. Large school division. For the Westboro Rangers, Dominic Casparello, Mike Doherty, Matt Doherty, Jake Hughes, and Jack Lentine, the starting lineup. For Groton Dunstable, Brian Scott, Jared LeClerc, Connor Keegan, Chris Watt, and Evan Cook. And Brian Willer, the Westboro coach. This is Greg Gillette, the head coach of Groton Dunstable, and he has led this Crusader team to some great success during his tenure as the head coach. And Brian Willer has done the same at Westboro. Westboro was in the championship last year, large school division. Their last championship in the Clark came back in 2007. Broughton Dunstable two years ago was in the championship. There's Brian Willer. And their last championship came in 2010. Brian Willer, an Oxford kid who Went to camps when Kevin Wells was coaching there. He played for Kevin Wells, so he knows all of Wellsy's secrets with the defenses, and one of them is they're going to try to deny Evan Cook. Broughton Dunstable's leading scorer in 17 a game. Well, Evan Cook is a great player. You know, it seems he's only a junior. It seems like he's been here for five years already, uh, but he's a, he's a nice player. He's a great leader. Uh, he's quiet. He's subtle in what he does. He's not flashy, but he's so consistent. And the Doherty brothers are just sensational for Westboro. And the thing about this Westboro team, though, is they are very balanced. Everyone can score. You can't just try to shut one guy off. The three is off the mark from Matt Doherty. Uh, great patience that time by Westboro. They used almost the entire shot clock. You know, and again, I think you've got to get the, uh, the jitters out. You've got to run your offense and be patient. And on the run, Jared LeClerc. Draws the foul, and he will go to the line and shoot two. Coming up between games, we will have a Worcester News Tonight news update, bringing you the top stories and a weather report. Of course, the weather report, very popular right now with what's going on outside with the snow. And then on our website, you can catch the complete newscast with all of today's stories. But in between games, we'll have a Worcester News Tonight update and a complete weather report for you. And then tonight at 10, our normal Worcester news tonight. Half an hour, all local news, weather and sports. So LeClerc makes one of two. Uh, he's a real fire plug. Tough kid, plays hard-nosed defense. Doherty for three. And Matt Doherty hits the three. And Westboro's got their first lead of the ball game. We have our first field goal of the night. It's 3-1. Now take a look. Evan Cook is number 40, and that's who they're trying to shut off. Doherty is trying to just shut him off, face guard him. Here's a steal. Jake Hughes brings it up on the run, up and in. Uh, Casparello. Great, great fast break, and again, Casparello. You know, these kids have been playing together for quite a while. Both of these teams are junior laden. And the third member of our broadcast crew is Andy Lacombe, who's roaming the sidelines. Andy, what do you have for us? Well, Kev, you mentioned quite correctly a matchup to watch tonight. Matt Doherty is going to be tasked with trying to shut down Evan Cook. Now, Kevin Wells mentioned that Cook seems like he's been playing for a couple of years. So his older brother is a pretty good ball player as well for Groton Dunstable. But Cook Doherty, a matchup to watch. And defensively, it's one that Matt Doherty really relishes, according to his coach. Guys? Thanks, Andy. Yeah, Evan, uh, Ethan Cook, rather, was just a phenomenal, phenomenal basketball player at Groton Dunstable. Great athlete for the Crusaders. Andy's always got a star next to him. Al Richards standing right off his shoulder. One of the all-time greats. He's always surrounded himself with the stars from the Clark Tournament Committee and Central Mass Sports. And Al is certainly one of those. Well, I think it has to do with his uh, tremendous faith in astrology. <laughs> and the alignment of the stars. Nice job inside by Westboro. Yeah, Lentine has his first field goal now four players for Westboro average double figures and the Rangers off to a hot start they lead it by six we've got a timeout we'll step aside as well what's up I'm Tom and this is two things with Tom thing number one Worcester Railers hockey is family fun 
bring the family and have a blast at the DCU Center in Worcester. Thing number two, Worcester Railers hockey is wicked affordable. Railers tickets start at just $15. Enjoy a great night out with your family or friends. Hockey is back. Hockey is back in Worcester. Give us a call, go to railershc.com and come see us at the rink. Welcome back everyone inside the Neller Center. The Westboro Rangers making their 51st appearance, 30th time they've been in the semifinals. 18 and 11 all time in the semis. And I like the warm up, though the, these new warm up jacket, jersey things, kind of like a, a boxer would wear with the hood, but the sleeveless. I like it. And this season they split in the regular season. And getting some replays here of Westboro showing you how they can score in bunches and from so many different ways on the fast break and just pounding it down low. One of the things they were thinking of was doing that, trying to use some of their height advantage down low, particularly at the guard position. Well, I think they're pretty dynamic in uh, the ways that they can score the basketball, but it's the same thing when it comes to Groton Dunstable. You know, they're a great team. They're proven again. Both defense. teams 11 and 9. Yep. And the defense there for Westboro. Down the other end, looking to convert. And we've got ourselves a jump ball. Good tenacity under the hoop as you get a look at Connor Keegan for Groton Dunstable, number 25, averaging eight points a game. Keegan adds some height to this team at 6-5. Over the top. So Jacqueline Teen picks up his first foul. So they're going to have Cook bring the ball up, and that's one of the ways to try to at least get the ball in his hands when he's being shut off. If you're Westboro, you want to just shut him off now. Once he passes the ball, get in his face, shut him off. He runs through a screen. Beautiful dish down low. Up off the window, no good. Groton Dunstable crashing the offensive glass. And a jump ball. Possession arrow in favor of the Crusaders. Beautiful dish that time, though, by Cook. And Cook running off the screens. And I'm sure Kevin will see a lot of that as they try to free Cook up. Well, Westboro doing a great job in their man-to-man -man defense, and they're looking to help. Here's the break again. Casparello ahead of the pack, off the front of the rim. Well, a missed opportunity. You know, Westboro has got that guy that's been leaking out, and he certainly is going to wreak havoc and score a lot of points if we don't have some transition by Groton Dunstable getting back. There's Westboro JQ's averages 12 a game for Brian Willer's squad. And again, these two teams split during the regular season. They have identical record, records. So tomorrow when the district seedings come out, probably going to be a coin flip to see who gets a bye, who gets a home game. It is an even matchup. And a three from Brian Scott. And well, that gets the Crusaders right back within three. Great hustle by both teams that time. Block shot, nice strong rebound. Both teams play a tough schedule. Broughton Dunstable thought it was off of the Westboro Rangers. Westboro inbounds it underneath. Trap. And it's a foul. So Jake Hughes will go to the line and shoot a pair for Westboro. Oh, Greg Gillette not happy at all with that last call. Here's a quick inbound play. And there's where he picked up the foul. That's number two on Connor Keegan. That's huge. That's your height, 6'5". And he just picked up his second foul early on here in the first quarter. Jake Hughes will have one more. It's 7-4, to four, Westboro in front. Greg Gillette still steaming over that last play that he thought was off of Westboro.
West Pro in a tough man-to-man -to -man defense. And Kevin, you're right. You know, when they want to free someone up, they're going to keep rubbing them off screens and having physical contact. Here's the break again. Great outlet. There's Doherty. On the scoop, Doherty draws the foul. So West Pro's already created three turnovers. The defense for the Rangers doing their job. Evan Cook picks up the foul, his first. It is the third team foul. Each team has three fouls on them right now. So clearly, as we look just under the first half of the first quarter, Westboro doing a great job of rebounding the ball and pushing it up. Groton Dunstable's got to find a way to make sure that they either jam the outlet so that they can't push or just get back. Up in the air, offensive rebound for the Rangers. Short jumper from Doherty knocks it down. Well, Doherty doing a great job. He had a shot and taking the three, decided to go into a little bit of uh, in the paint for a nice jumper. Six point lead for Westboro. Michael Doherty is the leading scorer for the Rangers who create another turnover. It's Jake Hughes ahead to Mike Doherty. No good. Crashing the offensive glass, the Rangers. The four footer in the lane is true from Jack Lentine. Lentine with a nice chippy, right place, right time. Timeout, Groton. 12-4, Groton Dunstable in front. The Clark Tournament on Charter TV 3 is brought to you by the law offices of Joseph J. Cariglia, the Worcester Railers Hockey Club, and Global Roofing of Sutton. Let's get another look at that break. There's a great steal right there, and again, Westboro filling the lanes. It was knocked away and just happened to land right into Mike Doherty's hand. Took it hard to the basket with a miss. And then, of course, the final nail, Jacqueline Teal with the finish. You know, great defense by Groton Dunstable. Offense by accident by Westboro. And then there's Lentine right in the middle. A little chippy lays it in. 12-4. Nice run right now by Westboro. Tonight's officials, Kevin, we've got uh, Ted Slattery, Danny Murphy, and Dean Packard in this game. Dean Packard, uh, his son John, uh, used to play for Shepherd Hill, who will be coming up in the next game. Uh, John is at Wilbraham Munson, doing a nice job there at a prep school. Groton Dunstable, you look at their numbers, 25th appearance, 19 times they've been in the semifinals. They are 7-11 in the semis. 2.45 to play in the first quarter. 12 to 4, Westboro. And Groton Dunstable with the ball as they look to chip into an eight point deficit. And they've gone to their bench, the Crusaders. Greg Gillette. Jake Gavel, no good. Offensive rebound. No good from Keegan. And here come the Rangers on the run. Casparello and Doherty. A lid on the basket for Groton Dunstable. You and I Travel. talked about this, Kevin, pregame off the air. You know, in the, the first quarter and sometimes even the first half, you want to keep it close, but sometimes you can almost throw out as long as you're not down by 20. You can kind of throw the first half right out the window, and it's what are you going to do? Crunch time in the second half, what kind of adjustments are you going to make, and what's, who's going to heat up for you? Yeah, I mean, it really is uh, It really is a warm-up. Now, turnover there. 4 turnovers for Groton Dunstable. Westboro has not turned it over once yet. You know, and again, we've got just under two minutes left in the first quarter. These teams know each other. Both teams have the ability to score points and score them quickly. So, uh, you know, Greg Gillette, I'm sure, doesn't like the way his kids are playing, but he knows he can get it back in a heartbeat. Uh, Westboro shooting 46% from the field. And uh, Rod Dunstable, 11%. We got a tie up. Good sportsmanship. That was Quinn Donovan going to the mat for Westboro. He's a junior. And that was uh, Jake Gavel again, going back to Greg Gillette and how he coaches and how he respects the game and everything about it. Uh, Jake Gavel, the 6'5 junior, lending a hand uh, to the Westboro player that had hit the deck. Jake Hughes, no good, and a good rebound from Brian Scott for Groton Dunstable, and 
Can they save it? No, it's picked off by Westboro on the run. A lot of traffic. Shoveled forward and a foul. And Michael Doherty will go to the line. Westboro doing, doing a nice job of taking advantage of opportunities. Pass back was thrown a little bit too high. Little shovel pass inside to Doherty, and he just was able to corral it. Michael Doherty, a junior captain. His brother's a junior captain, too. Three captains for this Westboro team, all juniors. Michael and Matt Doherty, and Jake Hughes as well. It is a nine-point advantage for Westboro so far. Make it 10 as Doherty hits them both. Westboro, three for six from the free throw line, hitting at 50%. Rotten Dunstable will go to the line. The Crusaders one of two from the free throw line, but one of nine from the field so far. Westboro on a 7-0 run. Evan Cook. In and out, he'll have one more. Again, Evan Cook, very creative with the basketball in his hands. He sees the floor very well, and he's able to get into the lanes like he did that time, getting to the glass. Evan Cook is a junior captain as well. So a lot of good leadership in the junior class, which is not what you typically see in high school sports. It's usually the captains are, are all seniors. So it speaks volumes to these guys' maturity and leadership ability. Pratt and Dunstable dropped into a zone that time. Cook with the ball. Scott on the wing. Scott knocked up in the air, and Westboro with another steal. Scott gets it back, looking for Cook. Can't find him. Gavel coming down the middle. Bushnell to the hoop, and Joe Bushnell breaking the ice, so to speak, for Groton Dunstable. It's been a while since their last field goal. Final 14 seconds of the first quarter. Brian Willer and Westboro going to hold for one shot. Well, that's what they want. Illegal screen. Alex Badger, yep. the sophomore. Oh, well, Groton might have an opportunity to score back-to-back -back hoops. They certainly have a chance to get a look at it. Here's Cook. This would help the Crusaders get a little momentum going into the break. A three from the wing, no good. And the rebound is grabbed by Badger. After one quarter, it is Westboro 14 and Groton Dunstable 6. Doors. Every door is different. Every door, unique. And each one tells a story. Open a door at Unibank and you'll find a unique place. A bank where we listen to you and find answers. All to help you write your unique success story. Welcome to the new Unibank. Please, after you. Unibank. Bank different. Bank unique. Member FDIC. Member DIF. Equal housing lender. Need a roof done and done right? Then call Global Roofing in Sutton. Proudly serving Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Southern New Hampshire at Global Roofing. We service both commercial and residential buildings, combining quality materials and workmanship. So when you need a reliable roof team for your commercial or residential building, there's only one place to call. Global Roofing. Visit us at globalroofinginc.org or call Global Roofing at 508-269-7860. Welcome back, everyone, to the 79th annual Clark Tournament Charter TV 3's live coverage of the large school semifinals. We talked about a lid being on the basket for that Groton Dunstable team. 407 went off the clock before their first field goal, and then another three and a half minutes went off the clock before their second field goal. Two field goals total in the quarter for Groton Dunstable. Not what you typically see from them, a good offensive team. Nice we want to say hello, too, to the McCaffrey family watching up in Hollis, New Hampshire. Mike McCaffrey is here. He is the athletic director for Groton Dunstable. Great guy. 
Just another area that Chowder happens to yeah. extend its uh, phalanges to. Oh, I like it. Crowd Cook. starting to pack in here. Turnaround jumper. Connor Keegan, the 6'5 junior, showing off the touch and playing with two fouls. Well, and they're going to need him to step up and score some buckets for them. 14-8. Westboro looking to answer. Loose basketball run down by Bushnell. Here comes Cook, quickly up the court. Groton Dunstable likes to run. O'Malley, Great three. Look. Joe O'Malley with a three, so Groton Dunstable had two field goals the entire first quarter. They've come out and scored two in the first 45 seconds here of the second quarter. Three consecutive trips down, they have scored. And they're on a seven nothing run right now. Well, and they'll get the ball back here. Kevin, it's great to look around and see people that uh, that have been around the game of basketball, that have been faithful to Clark Tournament for many, many years. Had a chance to see pa former state rep Paul Colios and his wife, Masha. They love the game. Bill Sullivan, former Shepherd Hill teacher and coach with his two boys here. No, and you're right, and there are people that, and, and older folks who, people that may not have kids in the game that will just come out for the Clark Tournament. Maybe the only high school basketball game they watch in person all season long. Cook with the jumper. There's a couple guys from Grafton who wish to remain anonymous that sit in the same seat every single year whether Grafton is in the tournament or not. And Groton Dunstable has a one point lead. Well, Kitty I... bar the door, here come the Crusaders. Connor Keegan's layup giving Groton Dunstable a one point advantage. You know, the Clark you... Tournament on Charter TV3 is presented by Unibank. Groton Dunstable's on an 11-0 run right now to start this second quarter. Well, here's Groton Dunstable, wide open lane, going hard to the basket. Nice job by Connor Keegan. You know, again, Kevin, you had mentioned he picked up two early fouls. You know, and he's going to have to be cognizant and very careful of that. But we had talked about it as we were broadcasting here. You know, it's uh, it, the first half is kind of a wash. You know, it's the warm-up. Yep. Uh, the fact of the matter is both of these teams can score quickly. We just saw that. So uh, it's not pipe dreams, Mr. Shea. It's uh, a the little bit dreams. of analysis. You did a yep. nice job. And we mentioned Worcester News tonight. News update will be coming up in between games. And you can go to chartertv3.com for a complete cast and all your big stories from around central Massachusetts, including our local weather report. Greg Gillette and Groton Dunstable looking to answer back. Andy Lacombe, you were by that Groton Dunstable huddle. What did they say? Kev, I will tell you, I've been around the Groton Dunstable bench most of the first half now. Greg Gillette is pretty even keel. His guys get a little emotional. They want to talk more. He's kept them on a level of playing field, level level keel, and uh, they've come back and made a run. Over here on the West Bros side, Brian Willer says that's their run, guys. Now it's our turn. Back to you. Thank you, and Jack Lentine certainly took those words to heart. The 6'4 junior already has six points. Now, Matty Doherty doing a nice job of taking it to the basket and then hitting Lentine, but right back comes the Crusaders. O'Malley, so back and forth we go, and now Broughton Dunstable has wrestled the lead back by one. Doherty around the horn. Westboro, again, has a very balanced attack, scoring-wise. Good up fake, Lentine. Great to ball the corner, movement. the three from Matt Doherty. And the rebound taken by O'Malley. Groton Dunstable doing a nice job in a matchup that time on defense. Westboro settles into a zone, 1-2-2. Two, two. Here's Cook up top. Throws you off a little bit too when you're- Six on the shot. To mix up defenses, here's Cook with a deep three. Offensive rebound. And now the foul is going to go, I believe, on Connor Keegan. That's going to be number three on Keegan. Well, that definitely hurts. Yeah, with, it is. That's number three. almost five minutes left here. I'm sure Greg Gillette's going to have to go to his bench. 
He's going to have to get it. Yeah, he is. He's yeah. going to the bench right now. Jacob Gavel's going to come in. He's a 6'5 junior, but that's a, that's a, that hurts right there. That's a big killer for Groton Dunstable. You lose Keegan early on in the game with three fouls like that. 4.39 to play here in the first half. Groton Dunstable with a one-point advantage, 17-16. And we saw early in that first quarter, Broughton Dunstable turning the ball over. Most recently, Westboro has not been valuing the basketball. They've been turning the ball over themselves. Broughton Dunstable, too, had water damage to their high school and to their gym. So they have not been able to play home games this year. They haven't been able to practice in their gym, too. The whole floor needs to be ripped up and redone. Broughton Dunstable, normally, they have the college court in the new high school. And so they love to run. and. Be ready for it. So they've been practicing at the middle school and playing some games at the middle school. Much smaller court. Here's Cook. And Cook draws the foul. Well, reach in. Alex Badger picks up his second. It is the 16th foul on Westboro. Evan Cook doing a nice job of getting the ball down the court. Taking it hard to the basket. Had fouled on the floor. One of the things when Groton Dunstable was put in their new high school, Keith Woods was the coach, and he pushed, and that's what he wanted. He wanted a college-sized court specifically for the Clark Tournament. He wanted his guys to be ready for the Clark Tournament. And it, it certainly is a big advantage. We don't see too many of the old gyms anymore because so many new schools have been built in Central Mass over the last five years. But, you know, you see these small, small courts, and then all of a sudden you get to a big court, it's a lot different, the extra 15, 20 feet you have to run. Well, you know, not only you have the width as well, so that lends itself to the point that you need to have depth when you're coming to the Clark Tournament. So the teams that are most successful go eight or nine deep minimum in order to make sure that kids are fresh. They can come out, they play hard, and then get a substitution. Cook driving, and he draws the foul, so he's going to shoot one and one. Yeah. Seventh team foul on Westboro. Gasparello picks up his first. Cook hits the first free throw. He has three points tonight. Brought in Dunstable, two of five from the free throw line. Cook hits them both. Broughton Dunstable in that matchup, man to man. Broughton Dunstable having a tough time hitting the hoop in the first quarter, but they've turned it right around. They're shooting 37% from the field right now. Well, Westboro's hitting at 32%. The Rangers started off hot. Cooled off a bit. Westboro, 6 of 19 from the field. And Groton Dunstable, 7 of 19 from the field. Little contact on that call. I know that uh, Coach Willer wasn't exceptionally pleased, but a travel call. Block. Great job by Westboro. There comes Michael Doherty. Doherty kicks it to the wing. Badger. Rebound, Cook. Crusaders will run. Westboro gets back defensively. Man-to-man -man defense now from the Rangers. Great job by Cook to find the open player beyond the arc and the rebound, Casparello. Westboro will settle into their half-court offense. 2.40 to play in the first half. 19-16, Groton Dunstable in front by three and with the ball. Well, Westboro certainly isn't afraid to shoot the basketball. There's Gavel. And Travel. Travel. So Jacob Gavel, a 6'5 junior, averaging five points a game. And they'll certainly need some big minutes from him. Connor Keegan. There's 6'5", Junior, who starts in foul trouble early. He has three personal fouls on the bench now. There's 
Doherty on the run. No good. Tied up. Yep. Declan Dunham and battling underneath. Possession Westboro. And there's Declan. Donovan's a senior. This will be his last opportunity to take home the crown here at Clark University. Gavel with the steal. And he draws the foul. Well, he'll go to the line. Beautiful athleticism. Look at this. He's got such a long wingspan. You know, great steal there, and then you can see the trip. So he'll have an opportunity to, uh, to get two back here at the free throw line. Jake Hughes picked up his second. It's a one and one opportunity for Gabble. Oh. Offensive rebound. Watt stolen. Doherty will bring it up for the Rangers as another steal for Westbrook. Three to tie it up. Off the front of the rim. Watt the rebound. Just under two minutes ago, Kevin, and I know that. Uh, our viewing audience is looking forward to our halftime guest today. Phil Robo, our longtime statistician. 21 years, he and I have been together. He's been working for Channel 3 for 25. He's been 40 years in the business as a statistician. As Cook drills the three, largest lead of the ball game for Groton Dunstable. It's a six point advantage. And Donovan with the offensive rebound. Donovan and Gavel battling for it, and he tied him up. Great defense from Gavel. Gavel is playing aggressive. Well, he had that big steal, went to the charity stripe, now down this end. 119 to play in the first half. A tale of two quarters. It was all Westboro in the first quarter. It's been all Groton Dunstable here in the second quarter. Gavel banging with Doherty. Yeah, good call. Dean Packard right there. And so Groton Dunstable will go to the line and shoot one and one. Gavel draws another foul. Drew this one on Donovan. Well, Donovan with just a little forearm shiver in the lower back as he was posting up. Gavel hits the first. Nice soft touch for yeah. the lefty. And a seven point lead for Groton Dunstable. It's incredible. Isn't it? From, yeah. from where they started. Groton Dunstable going to go to their bench. With 110 to play in the first half, Cook will get a break. Joe O'Malley will come in. Greg Gillette, his team with a lead, doesn't want to see Cook pick up his second foul. Gavel hits them both. Looking for a field goal here in the final minute. Looking to chip away at an eight point deficit. Great cut on the pass. Westboro's 0 for their last nine from the field. Well, they reset the shot clock. Great job sharing the basketball. I don't know if they should have reset that shot clock. But that's why I commentate. Five second right. count. That's beautiful defense from Groton Dunstable. And Groton Dunstable with a chance now, 45 seconds on the game clock, to just hold the ball if they want. Up by eight. Well, right now they're playing so well, I just continue to go right at them. Here's Cook back in the ball game. They're playing with confidence. They're scoring with confidence. The execution is outstanding. Westboro does not have a number two in the book. Known to family and friends. A big jump step. Two-step stop. Nice job. Yep. The crowd wanted to travel. On the floor. The foul is That'll on the floor. That'll be a one-on-one one now. Yes, you're right. It will be the 17 foul. So a shooting foul, regardless. One, one, one. One, one. 
Dominic Casparello has two points tonight, averaging 13 a game. He shoots a one and one, nails the first. Ending a little bit of a scoring drought for the Rangers as they trail it 24 to 17. 13 seconds to play in the first half. First of two large school semifinals we will be broadcasting tonight. Casparello hits them both. A soft touch. Here's Cook with 10 seconds. Cook peels back. Six seconds to play in the half. Cook to the rack and in with two and a half seconds to play. Great job by Cook getting the, uh, taking his time, being patient, pulling it back out, and then shifting it to high gear, taking it to the rack. Nine Take points. Look, takes it in, pulls it back out, crossover dribble, hard to the rack and lays it in. Experienced veteran player doing a nice job. Nine points for Evan Cook in the first half. His Groton Dunstable Crusaders have come back. They trailed by 10 at once. One point they trailed by 10, but they lead it by six. Right now at the half as the two teams go to the dressing room and Andy Lacombe's gonna catch up with the Westboro head coach, Brian Willer, who's walking down there now. Westboro owned the first quarter and second quarter was all Groton Dunstable. Andy Lacombe standing by now with Brian Willer from Westboro, Andy. All right, coach, uh, just your thoughts. They made a run on you obviously, but it's a six point game at halftime. What do you need to do? Uh, we just need to pretty much make some shots, all right? I think it's that's what it comes down to. We got we wanted, we just wanted yeah, the shots and they got on transition a little bit, but we can clean that up. That was, uh, we won the first quarter, they won the second quarter, you know, so we just have to play with a little more patience on the offensive end and get what we want and we have to go up strong and we'll be fine. A lot of basketball left. Thanks, Coach. Good luck to you. Guys? All right, thanks, Andy. We'll take a timeout and be back with our halftime activities, including our legendary one on one interview with the legend, the statistician Phil Rowan. Doors. Every door is different. Every door, unique. And each one tells a story. Open a door at Unibank and you'll find a unique place. A bank where we listen to you and find answers. All to help you write your unique success story. Welcome to the new Unibank. Please, after you. Unibank. Bank different. Bank unique. Member FDIC. Member DIF. Equal housing lender. What's up? I'm Tom, and this is Two Things with Tom. Thing number one, Worcester Railers Hockey is family fun. Bring the family and have a blast at the DCU Center in Worcester. Thing number two, Worcester Railers Hockey is wicked affordable. Railers tickets start at just $15. Enjoy a great night out with your family or friends. Hockey is back. Hockey is back in Worcester. Give us a call, go to railershc.com, and come see us at the rink. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Just like in baseball, good sports reporting relies on the bullpen. There are days when our front man just doesn't have his stuff anymore. What is he doing? This is rude. I think it's Grafton. It could be Bartlett. It's a green and white team. You don't have it's it. You're done. Son of a bitch. I fucking have it. Tell me I don't I can still bring it. Yes. Time. All right, that's actually Bartlett versus Milbury, and it's Todd Deshane for Milbury. I'm just glad I can be a role guy here. You can't get Worcester weather from a Boston TV station. The sun could be shining in downtown Boston, but the weather could be very different here in Worcester. People tell me all the time how much they count on our weather forecast, and we know how important that is to our Worcester News Tonight viewers. Each weekday, we'll give you your weather, your 10-day forecast for right here in Worcester, only on Worcester News Tonight. Worcester's only local forecast, weeknights on Worcester News Tonight. Welcome back, everyone. At the half, Groton Dunstable in front of Westboro, 26-18 large school semifinals. Game one of our two-game set. And I'm pleased to be joined with our statistician, Phil Robo, 
Phil has been with us in my entire career, 21 years here, 24 years all told at Channel 3, 40 years as the statistician, and Phil is retiring in the fall. This will be his final basketball season. He'll do a couple games in the fall, but last full season for you is this hoop season. And uh, Phil, first, let me just say on behalf of all of our crew, thank you for all, all of the games and all the service and, and all the sacrifice and all the hours that you've put into helping our broadcast and it's always behind the scenes you know we don't you don't get the credit we get the credit but uh but you're the guy that's that's really making us look good whether it's uh, in football games or basketball games with with all the stats well thank you kevin but you know you've given me a lot of credit over the years <laughs> <laughs> my name's been mentioned a million times and a lot of my friends have said that's got to be you <laughs> <laughs> that's great well i'll tell you what we've had a ton of fun it's been it's been a lot of fun all these years broadcasting together and you and I are, are two guys that uh, maybe don't take ourselves seriously, but take our job seriously and, and want to always put on a great product. Um, 40 years, and I know you started with Channel 27 doing New England college football games, and you were doing Doug Flutie's freshman year at BC before the networks came in. They knew what they had with Flutie and with BC. You were broadcasting the games on, tw on 27, doing the stats for those broadcasts. The Gordy Lockbaum years at Holy Cross, you were doing the stats for all that. What was it like? What, were the, what was the atmosphere like around those stadiums? And, you know, what was the whole, the energy, and what were the stadiums like? Well, you know, um, Holy Cross went undefeated. They lost only a couple of games in a couple of years. Uh, they had a great coach, and they had a great team. Gaudy was just, just such a great kid, you know. He came to actually, he did the uh, color commentator for us my final six years on the radio. Uh, he was just a nice guy, and everybody came to see him, came to see the team. Uh, Holy Cross was really a powerhouse. I'll tell you, the stadium was really packed. And, you know, Bob Foraker, who was doing the games, uh, he played the part, and he played it well. <laughs> <laughs> kind of the MC, the, the master of ceremonies, the Absolutely. ringmaster more than anything. He was, is, as anyone that knows him, he's P.T. Barnum. Um, but now, you, and we've, I've said this on the air, but you always try to tell the game story through the numbers. Absolutely. Tell us, tell us about that, about what you try to do whether it's uh, football or basketball, and what you're trying to, to provide the viewers? You, you know, uh, anybody can keep the score and keep the fouls and that type of thing. But what I try to do is, I, I in basketball, it's when every shot is, is, is a, attempted, whether it's, it's hit or missed. And I have to log that, and I have to log it by the time. Um, like today, for instance, there was two seven nothing runs by Westbro, but... Um, Groton Dunstable came back with a 10 nothing run. And I have to show you how long in between their field goals and, uh, you know, how long they were shut out and how long that they kept the ball. And, that, and, you know, points off of turnovers, turnovers. I try to show you the game in a flow. Right. And I, and I love it and do such a great job with it. I know you want to mention, too, your wife, Jane, has been uh, phenomenal for you. You've been spending so many nights away with us, so many weekends away with us, uh, missing some of your, your son's events, Sean and Justin, but uh, I know you want to, to thank her and, and the sacrifice that she put up, puts up with as well. Well, uh, you know, Jane's always said, gee, you know, what are you doing Saturday? I said, well, I'm doing a game. What do you think I'm doing? <laughs> <laughs> and um, she said, you know, it's our weekend. And I said, yeah, I, I understand. She's been a real trooper through this whole thing. Um, She's understood. And, yeah. you know, she, she knows it's basically a hobby that I'm getting paid for. Right. And I started this, like I said, for, like you said, 40 years ago. And it's been a lot of fun. And you know, she's come to a few of the games. And, you know, she, she likes it. You know? You've seen us grow. You've been a tremendous part of my life and Kevin Wells' life as well. He's officiated my wedding, Kevin Wells' wedding as well. We're out of time. But, Phil, thanks so much. Thanks so much. As a friend, thank you so much for thank everything you, you've Kevin. done for us. I greatly Phil appreciate Robo, it. he is the best. We didn't even get into all the stuff he's done for Lester as a member of the Lions Club there and heading it up. When we come back, the second half between Groton Dunstable and Westboro, who's going to the Clark Championship? It will be decided after this. Doors. Every door is different. Every door, unique. And each one tells a story. Open a door at Unibank and you'll find a unique place. A bank where we listen to you and find answers. All to help you write your unique success story. Welcome to the new Unibank. Please, after you. Unibank. Bank different. Bank unique. Member FDIC. Member DIF. Equal housing lender. What's up? I'm Tom and this is Two Things with Tom. Thing number one. Worcester Railers hockey is family fun. 
bring the family and have a blast at the DCU Center in Worcester. Thing number two, Worcester Railers hockey is wicked affordable. Railers tickets start at just $15. Enjoy a great night out with your family or friends. Hockey is back. Hockey is back in Worcester. Give us a call, go to railershc.com and come see us at the rink. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Just like in baseball, good sports reporting relies on the bullpen. There are days when our front man just doesn't have his stuff anymore. What is he doing? This is rude. I think it's Grafton. It could be Bartlett. It's a green and white team. No, it's You're done. Son of a bitch. I fucking have it. Oh, yeah. I can still bring it. Yes. All right. That's actually Bartlett versus Milbury, and it's Todd and Shane from Milbury. I'm just glad I can be a role guy here. You can't get Worcester weather from a Boston TV station. The sun could be shining in downtown Boston, but the weather could be very different here in Worcester. People tell me all the time how much they count on our weather forecast, and we know how important that is to our Worcester News Tonight viewers. Each weekday, we'll give you your weather, your 10-day forecast for right here in Worcester, only on Worcester News Tonight. Worcester's only local forecast, weeknights on Worcester News Tonight. All right, here's some highlights from our first half. And like we said, this was a tale of two quarters. The first quarter was all Westboro as they led it 14 to six at the end of the first quarter. Second quarter, Groton Dunstable outscored Westboro 20 to four. And Groton Dunstable leads 26-18 here at the half. Yeah, the first half was just like the weather. You know, four days ago it's 70 or 62 days ago rather. And uh, now all of a sudden we've got snow here. You're ice cold uh, the first quarter, and then you're red hot in the second quarter. There's the jumper from just inside the arc. Off the mark, Rotten Dunstable's cooked with the rebound. Inside. Kick it to the corner for Rotten Dunstable. Westboro Keegan. doing a nice job, man to man. Connor Keegan in there for Groton Dunstable. Remember, he has three fouls. But he'll start the second half for Greg Gillette. Westboro looking to get back on track. They were on track in the first quarter. Not so in the second quarter. The runner is off the iron. But Michael Doherty will go to the line and shoot two. Doherty coming in, averaging 17 and a half points, the leading scorer for this Westboro team that has four players that average in double figures. You know, Andy made a really good point. He said how even keel Greg Gillette, the head coach of Groton Dunstable is. You know, and I think that's really important because they weren't playing well in that first quarter, so he didn't let them get down on themselves. In the second quarter, they played exceptionally well. He didn't let them get too excited. You know, it's about balance, and he does a really good job of uh, keeping his kids in check. Doherty hits one of two, and Cook hits the deck hard. Cook will draw the foul, yeah, but he ball. really hit the deck hard. Gasparillo picks up his second for Westboro. Each team with one team foul in the first minute of play here in the second half. 26-19, Groton Dunstable with the ball in the lead. The winner moves on to the large school championship on Saturday night. And again, the two teams split during the regular season. Good look down low, and Keegan is fouled. And that one is on Casparello as well, so Casparello picks up two quick ones, yep. So Casparello picks up his third. See, he didn't give him enough space, Kevin, when he caught the ball to even turn. You know, so that's why you see Casparello going out. Substitution coming in. Yeah, Badger coming in for Westboro. Alex Badger. You know, he's only a sophomore and he's seeing plenty of time. Five second violation. Yep. 
And we've seen one called on either team. 6.45 to play in the third quarter. Kev, you and I said it, and you said it to me before the game. Now the first half is kind of a wash. The game will be decided in the second half. Who steps up? Who gets hot? We'll see what happens here. Groton Dunstable with a seven-point lead. Elbow jumper. And offensive foul and over nope. the back call. Yeah, over the top, I think, on yep. uh, Chris Watt. Watt, the 6'1", senior forward. So that's the third on Watt. That's huge. So two players for Groton Dunstable playing with three personals, two starters playing with three personals. Here's Doherty. He'll shoot two. Matt Doherty going hard to the rim. Is it Jared LeClerc? Yep, it is Jared LeClerc. Fortunately, only his first. Right. But it's the third team foul already on Grot Dunstable. And so Doherty will have one more. West Pro shot 62.5% from Charity Stripe in the first half. Not where Coach Willow would like to see it. Rotten Dunstable in the first quarter was 2 of 11 from the field. Second quarter, 7 of 13. So they shot 54% in that second quarter when they made their run. Conversely, Westboro shot 36% in the first quarter, 5 of 14. They were 1 of 11 Loose. in the second quarter for 9%. Well, okay. Foul goes against Grot Dunstable. That will be the fourth team with, as we approach the six minute mark here in the third quarter. 14 minutes to play in the game and they've already got four. Free throw shooting may determine this one. Here's a three from Hughes, no good. Took the rebound. Cook bringing it up. Cook going to the hoop and he draws the foul. It's on the floor, it'll be on Matt Doherty. Help. Again, Cook being very smart. He's got the defender running. He knows that he's in motion, and he just goes right at him. That is number two on Matt Doherty. Third team foul for the Rangers. Here's Cook up top. Cook to the lane. Cut off at the pass. Good defense from Jack Lenteen. And an offensive rebound from Lenteen. A three from Badger. Oh, and Lentine's going to be whistled for the foul as he was battling with Gavel. That is number two on Lentine. A lot of fouls here in the third quarter. Each team with four fouls. We still got 520 to play in this quarter. So in under uh, three minutes, eight fouls called. Nice box out. Yeah, good job by good. Doherty. Here's Doherty. Eight footer on the baseline. No good. Cook the rebound. Cook gets it up to Keegan. Keegan looking inside at Gavel. Back up top to Cook and they swing it around to Bushnell. Keegan on the run. Count it. A uh, big bucket by Keegan. Nice job getting inside the paint. You know, I was just looking. Westboro shot 24% from the floor in the first half. And here in the second half, it hasn't gotten much better. Jack Lentine, I believe, just picked up his third personal foul. And that is the fifth team foul on Westboro, he did. Lentin did pick up his third. The Clark Tournament on Charter TV 3 is brought to you by the law offices of Joseph J. Cariglia and the Worcester Railers Hockey Club and Global Roofing of Sutton. Global Roofing, the Worcester Railers Hockey Club and the law offices of Joseph J. Cariglia. Proud to sponsor Charter TV 3's coverage of the 79th Annual Clark Tournament. There's the Westboro huddle. As the Rangers trailing it by eight. 
28 to 20. They trailed by eight at the break. Wonder if Andy has any secrets for and us out of that huddle. Over by the Groton Dunstable huddle. Andy, what was Greg Gillette saying? We're going to have to get back to you. Marceau, Marceau, a little silent movie. Let's see if we can hear from Andy now. Andy, what were they saying over there at that? Uh, Kev, Kev can, you, can you hear me, Kev? I can hear it. Tell Fowler I can hear him. <laughs> can you hear me now? <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, the Groton Dunstable bench again, working some plays. Now, Greg Gillette telling his guys he wants to go inside. He wants his bigs to flash, be strong inside, and he wants to get it in the post. He just tell, he's challenging his big guys to, uh, you know, be big, be strong, and, and want the ball in the paint. Guys? Thanks, Andy. 4.45 to play in the quarter. 28 to 20. One would expect that Westboro is going to start to erupt at any, uh, any point in time, Kevin, to at least get themselves back into the ball game. But a turnover is not going to help. Keegan will inbound the ball to Cook. Matt Doherty picking up Cook. Here's Keegan on the block. Cook traveled with the ball. Well, these are the opportunities that Westboro really needs to try to take advantage of. Down by eight, 420 to go. Here's Doherty for three. This would help him get right back in it. Matt Doherty with his second three of the game. He's got seven points, and it is a five-point game. Well, uh, you hit a couple of those, and now all of a sudden you can count one possession, two possession. That could be the spark plug that they needed. Westboro had missed their previous 11 shots. Uh, Alex Badger, I believe, picked that up. That's his third. Again, that's what we talked with Phil Robo at the half, but that's one of those things where Phil just picks up the flow of the game and the storylines and gives it to us to tell to you. Deep good. rebound. Brighton yeah. doing a nice job of uh, pulling it in. Bushnell shot, no good. Oh. Underneath, Gavel. Well, it was tipped right to him. Back to a seven point advantage. Here's Doherty. Shovels it forward, good passing, and Quinn Donovan with his first field goal of the night for Westboro. It's back to a five point game. Here's Gavel. Travel. It'll be Westboro basketball. As Groton Dunstable go into the bench, Connor Keegan will get a breather. Chris, Chris Watt, Watt back up. Yeah. yeah, and Watt's got three fouls on him. Keegan has three fouls on him. Westboro has six as a team, so Groton Dunstable will be shooting from here on out. Westboro working like the three-man weave beyond the arc. Three from the corner. In and out off the fingertips of Badger. And here comes Groton Dunstable back the other way. Loose ball. Here's Hughes. Hughes to Doherty. Doherty shovels it forward to his brother Michael. Michael and Matt battling. Hughes goes to the mat. Gets Great it. hustle. Just can't finish. And a big rebound by Watt. Watt just grabs that loose ball and swinging those elbows. Gavel blocked. And a foul. Uh, no shot, so it will be a one and one. But boy, what great hustle. Look at Doherty. Come fly with me. Wow. Great block. <laughs> wow. Yeah, great timing. Gave his teammates an opportunity to get back into it. Unfortunately, still fouled. Greg Gillette looking for a two shot foul. I love the come fly with me reference. Old school Michael Jordan, that's <laughs> outstanding. One of the great VHS tapes to have was that come fly with me. That's it. Jacob Gavel shooting one and one. 
Long rebound, Watt, the offensive rebound. Now it's stolen by Doherty. Matt Doherty goes up and in. It's a three-point game. Well, nice job by Doherty. Timeout brought Dunstable. And now Westboro's got a little momentum as the Rangers fighting their way back into this game. They trail it by three. What's up? I'm Tom, and this is Two Things with Tom. Thing number one, Worcester Railers hockey is family fun. Bring the family and have a blast at the DCU Center in Worcester. Thing number two, Worcester Railers hockey is wicked affordable. Railers tickets start at just $15. Enjoy a great night out with your family or friends. Hockey is back. Hockey is back in Worcester. Give us a call, go to railershc.com and come see us at the rink. You can do that. Welcome back, everyone. Kevin Shea, Kevin Wells, Andy Lacombe, and Phil Robo. 79th Annual Clark Tournament. This is the first of our doubleheader tonight, as we'll have both semifinals for you tonight. This is the first one. Groton Dunstable and Westboro. And in the second one, it is Shepherd Hill and Auburn tonight. And again, we will have a Worcester News tonight news update in between games. Andy, who were you, who'd you hear, who'd you listen in on during that break? Well, Greg, I was with Groton Dunstable for a little bit. Coach Gillette told his guys to think, be calm, play through it. Coach Willer's turning different shades of color down here. He's <laughs> got some good intensity. And you know what, the Westboro guys, Murph and the boys are all here. Oh, and they they're are. loving it. From the Central House, they are here watching the game. A lot of Westboro uh, fans in attendance down the other end. Guys. I love it. Murph is one of the great Westboro fans, one of the great Westboro families, too, the Murphy family. And all of his girls played sports for Westboro, had phenomenal careers, and he was such a great supporter. He'd do the PA for the football. And we always look forward to his sausage, peppers, and onions in the crock pot when we do a game. Foul on the reach in. I think it's LeClerc. Yep. So that's the fifth team foul on Groton Dunstable with 1.43 to play here in the third quarter. Leclerc's second foul. Hughes. Go inside. Hughes now goes around the horn. Doherty. Doherty takes it up. Oh, a circus oh shot. Michael Doherty with a circus scoop, and we got a one point game. Wow. Great degree of difficulty on that one. What, a 10? A great job attacking the glass. You know, it's, it's something that you see in gymnastics. And even the Russian judge would have to give him a 9-9 nine -nine on that. Here comes Doherty. Missed opportunity for the Crusaders. Hughes gets it to the corner to Donovan. Matt Doherty to Michael Doherty. The two twins. Michael Doherty up top. At seven on the shot clock. An offensive foul on Michael Doherty. Well, nice job taking one for the team, stepping in. Here's that, I call it the fly and will lend it, but I'll tell you, he had contact, he gets hit, turns his body, throws up the right hand, the underhand, 30-29, cut the lead to one. Three ball from the corner for LeClerc and an offensive rebound from Keegan. Great rebound by Keegan. Offensive rebounds for Groton Dunstable. You think about some of those second and third opportunities they've had. They have been big in this game. Again, Keegan playing with three fouls. You know, doing a great job of keeping himself out of trouble. Here's Cook with a deep three. Doherty the rebound. Hughes, Doherty, no good. They got the shot off in time. Chance to go up by one, but they did close an eight point deficit to one. After three quarters, one point separating Groton Dunstable and Westboro, the Crusaders up 30 to 29. Doors, every door is different. Every door unique, and each one tells a story. 
Open a door at Unibank and you'll find a unique place. A bank where we listen to you and find answers. All to help you write your unique success story. Welcome to the new Unibank. Please, after you. Unibank. Bank different. Bank unique. Member FDIC. Member DIF. Equal housing lender. Need a roof done and done right? Then call Global Roofing in Sutton, proudly serving Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Southern New Hampshire at Global Roofing. We service both commercial and residential buildings, combining quality materials and workmanship. So when you need a reliable roof team for your commercial or residential building, there's only one place to call, Global Roofing. Visit us at globalroofinginc.org or call Global Roofing at 508-269-7860. All right, Saturday, it's Championship Saturday right here at the Clark Tournament. We will be here with you for the championship doubleheader. The small schools kick us off at 6 o'clock, and then the large schools will be after that. Broughton Dunstable will put it in play. The Crusaders up by one. Andy, would you hear during that turnover? Coach Willer telling his guys we had a great quarter. Let's keep it going. Talking, about the, talking to the Doherty's, Mike is going to handle the rock at least to start as he has been all game long, but he's going to be a focus here in the fourth, perhaps. Keegan with an offensive rebound. No good. Another offensive rebound by Gavel. And in. Well, I'll tell you right now, just what Coach Gillette said, we've got to take it to them. And he, two offensive rebounds and finally a putback. Big basket there. Three-point lead for Groton Dunstable. And Cook gets a deflection. Doherty collects. Here's Michael Doherty. His three would have tied an offensive rebound for Westboro. Matt Doherty for three to tie. Loose ball collected by Keegan. Good handle from Keegan. On the run, gets it to Cook in the corner. To the clerk. Great pass. It's oh, knocked up. away in a foul. Well, Matt great Doherty. rotation. If there's such thing as a good foul, that was it because he had a uh, an easy one. Around the horn we go. A nice job sharing the basketball, making the defense react, and then dumping the ball inside. Broughton Dunstable doing an outstanding job. Westboro, Kevin, with two offensive rebounds on the other end, and then they couldn't convert. Keegan hits the first free throw. You know, Kevin, we've got a lot of supporters throughout Central Mass, but uh, probably the greatest athletic supporters around are down at the Webster Fishing Game. I know that they're watching, they're waiting. The Bartlett Indians weren't able to get in this year, but the Rams are coming up next. I love it. I love it. Under seven minutes to play in the game. Five point lead for Groton Dunstable as they convert two free throws. It was the ninth team foul on Westboro, so Groton Dunstable will shoot two from here on out. And that's big, and now there's a foul on Gavel. Gavel picks up the foul, that's the sixth team foul on Groton Dunstable, not a shooting foul yet. One more. One more and it's one and one for Westboro. Oh, that's Gavel's second, okay. I thought it might have been his third. Lentine around and in. Little English on it. That is his third. Well, take a look, Lentine going at it hard. Gavel got him on the way up. Oh, wait. I think they put the wrong foul up on the uh, scoreboard. They have 34. Lentine converts. He's got nine points. It's a four-point game right now. Each team in the bonus. 6.20 to play in the game. It's a two-point game. Westbrook oh, picks it. The, yeah, oh, the right oh, back. Count the basket. Keegan will go to the line. Again, Groton Dunstable doing a great job of moving the basketball around the perimeter. Take a look. Here's Keegan slipping down Main Street. Great pass and an outstanding finish. So it's a four-point lead right now for Groton Dunstable. Keegan converts the three-point play. Crusaders up by five, 
37 rather than 32. Oh, oh good nice fake, fake from Lentine. Cook with the rebound. Crusaders bring it up quickly. I'm sure we've got more than our share of viewers tonight, especially with the weather, with the snow. I'm sure there's a, a bunch of folks that said, you know what, we're not going to take the drive in because of the road conditions. We'll watch on TV. And we thank all of you for watching tonight and tuning in to this Great broadcast. Great pass. Lentine Boy. starting to say, hey, this is my time. It's crunch time. I'll take it, boys. Full gallop by Lentine as he lays it in on the run. Westboro down by three. Here's that zone. Cook up top. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Gavel tried to go down low to Keegan, deflected out of bounds with seven seconds remaining on the shot clock. Brought and Dunstable just so deliberate with the basketball on the offensive end. You know, they execute so very well. Bushnell in the ball game now with the ball, gets it off to Gavel. Eight footer on the baseline, no good. Offensive rebound by Cook, and a fresh 30 seconds for the Crusaders. Big offensive rebound from Cook. Oh, great job, he pulls it out, spreads the floor. He's also getting double teamed right now. He finds the open man. Here's Cook, dumping it to Keegan in the paint. Deflected, still loose. Corralled by the Rangers. Here comes Great Doherty. Hustle. Ahead of the pack is Badger. It's a one-point game once again. Groton Dunstable by one. Badger's first field goal of the game, and it's a big one for Westboro. Gee, you might think that they split during a regular season, right? <laughs> <laughs> Cook for three. High arcing rebound. Oh, Westboro coming down with a big one. Dominic Casparello, 6-1, and he skied for it. And a three, Westboro's got the lead. Alex Badger with back-to-back -back field goals. A 5-0 run for Westboro. Rangers by two. You know, you take a look at that there. You know, he's only a sophomore. He gets the ball in the wing. He turned, his release was within three seconds of when he caught the ball. 4.02 to play. Westboro fired up. They lead it by two. They've got great guards. There's a lot to this one, isn't it? Nice step through. Moves, plays it up. There's Poppy stepping into a three. The Clark Tournament on Charter TV 3 is presented by Unibank. Welcome back, here you go. Here's that fast break, you know, and again, this is what has gotten Westboro right back into the ball game and given them a 39-37 lead. And there it is, the sophomore, catch and release within 30 seconds. Didn't even think about taking it to the 10. He just knew he had an open shot. He had been shooting the shots uh, so far in the ball game, not with a lot of success, but it didn't defer him from taking another one, Kevin. The Clark Tournament on Charter TV3 is presented by Unibank. 4.02 to play in the game. Winner moves on to the Clark Tournament Championship, large school division. Alex Badger with a huge, huge shot there. Westboro in there, 1-2-2. Two, two. We have had four lead changes in the game. We have never had a tie. Four lead changes. Broughton Dunstable can tie it up with a two or take the lead with a three. Here's Cook for the lead. Rebound Doherty. Michael Doherty gets it over to his brother Matt. Now back to Michael. The Doherty brothers going back and forth. Oh, nice job. They pull it out, spread the floor, open things up. Now they start to execute their offense. Badger, he's been on fire. Five straight points for Westboro. Here's Lentine. Badger on the wing. Three seconds on the shot clock. Doherty blocked and fouled. And that's number four on Gavel. So Doherty will shoot two, but the fourth personal on Jacob Gavel. Here's Doherty right into your living room. Take a look. 
Gavel had his hand on the ball, but I think he had a little bit too much body. You know, and it's a smart play by Doherty because he got into his body to draw that foul. Doherty hits the first free throw. He has 10 points tonight. He averages 15 a game. Gavel checking out with his fourth. It's a three-point lead for Westboro. Make it four. Nice shoot his touch just over the lip of the rim and rolled it around and in. Two possession game right now with 3.05 to play. Three point advantage, we've swung the other way now. Westboro trailed by eight at the half. This has been a game of runs. As Groton Dunstable have another run in them here with under three to play. Three seconds on the shot clock, they're gonna have to hoist it. Cook does from deep. Doherty the rebound. Now well, Westboro settles things down once again. Broughton Dunstable 0 for 6 from beyond the arc this half. Nice job by Cook. Three, in and out, offensive rebound, Doherty up and in. Now big offensive rebound by Doherty and an outstanding finish. Right now, there's not an answer for Groton Dunstable in the last couple trips for the Rangers. Scott. It is a six point lead for Westboro. Rangers on an 11 nothing run. Under two minutes to play. Hughes for three, knocks it down. Well, timeout Groton Dunstable, but now it's Westboro's turn. Like a microwave oven, they're heating it up quick. The Rangers fans are on their feet. It is a nine point lead for Westboro. What's up, I'm Tom and this is Two Things with Tom. Thing number one, Worcester Railers hockey is family fun. Bring the family and have a blast at the DCU Center in Worcester. Thing number two, Worcester Railers hockey is wicked affordable. Railers tickets start at just $15. Enjoy a great night out with your family or friends. Hockey is back. Hockey is back in Worcester. Give us a call, go to railershc.com and come see us at the ring. So we talk about Westboro, Kevin. You know, they've been on a roll here. Right place, right time, offensive put back, a nice job. And then here's a big bucket by Hughes. You know, they've just done such a great job. But you take a look at tonight's ball game. One team goes on a run, another one's ice cold. And then they flip flop, water's lukewarm, and the next thing you know, it's boiling. Right now, <laughs> you know, it. Westboro, it. it's boiling for the Rangers. Oh, Westboro's on a 14 nothing run. Groton Dunstable's last field goal came at the 6-13 mark. So almost five minutes without a field goal for Groton Dunstable as they look to heat up the waters. Andy, what did you hear during that timeout? Kev, not a whole lot. I'm here with some young Ranger fans behind the bench. We're gonna introduce them to you if we get a chance in a little bit. All right, 1.33 to play. Westboro with the ball and the lead. And they're gonna enjoy the ball for a little bit here. Hughes. Hughes double teamed, kicks it to the corner. Badger, the Doherty's each get a quick touch. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Hughes to Badger, left handed no good. Last touch by Groton Dunstable, it'll be Westboro ball. Three seconds on the shot clock. Three seconds on the shot clock. Westboro's gonna have to hoist it quickly, let's see. Ryan Willow wants a fresh 30. Andy, what do you got for us? Let's see, they're gonna keep three. They're gonna keep it three seconds on the shot clock. They're gonna have to hoist it quickly. They do get it off in time and in. Boy, Matt Doherty. That's a big bucket with 105 to play. It's an 11 point lead for Westboro. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a run that uh, is unbelievable right now. It's Big a 16-0 run. Westboro trailed by eight at the half. 16-0 run for Westboro, and they're going to enjoy the clock right now a little bit and let time go down. Groton Dunstable's got a foul with 41.9 seconds to play. 
Westboro will be at the line shooting one and one. Michael Doherty, the junior try captain. Big free throws there. Doherty hits the first. It is a 12 point lead, largest lead of the ball game for Westboro. Westboro led by eight after one quarter. They trailed by eight at the half. Doherty hits them both. 13 point lead, so Groton Dunstall is going to have to shoot quickly. They do so. Cook hits a three. Nice job by Cook. Here's the full court pressure by the Crusaders. They get it in in time. They get it up the court. Lentine ahead of the pack, and he throws it down. Jack Lentine with the exclamation point on this victory for Westboro, a two-handed slam. Keegan comes back and hits a three and has to foul. Wow. Heck of a shot for Keegan. Take a look at it here. Nice job. Just got it over the top of the iron. Great finish. 14.8 seconds remaining. Michael Doherty will shoot two. It's the 10th team foul on Groton Dunstan. So Doherty hits the first. Doherty has been clutch from the free throw line. Really clutch. He's got 12 points tonight. Six of them have come from the strike. This is a run that, from Westboro that uh, is unprecedented. You know, we don't see this. We haven't seen this in like light years. You're right. Doherty with a rebound. An 11 point lead, four seconds left. They hoist it up and Westboro is going to move on to the championship on Saturday. The Rangers trailed by eight at the half. They come back to win it 54 to 43. Brian Willer and Westboro going back to the championship game at the Clark Tournament. That is a big, big win for the Rangers as they take it 54-43 in game one of our semifinal doubleheader here from the Neller Center. We're going to throw it to a quick break and be back with all of our post-game activities you're going to hear from the winners coming up next. Doors. Every door is different. Every door, unique. And each one tells a story. Open a door at Unibank and you'll find a unique place. A bank where we listen to you and find answers. All to help you write your unique success story. Welcome to the new Unibank. Please, after you. Unibank, bank different, bank unique. Member FDIC, member DIF, equal housing lender. What's up? I'm Tom, and this is Two Things with Tom. Thing number one, Worcester Railers hockey is family fun. Bring the family and have a blast at the DCU Center in Worcester. Thing number two, Worcester Railers hockey is wicked affordable. Railers tickets start at just $15. Enjoy a great night out with your family or friends. Hockey is back. Hockey is back in Worcester. Give us a call, go to railershc.com and come see us at the rink. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Just like in baseball, good sports reporting relies on the bullpen. There are days when our front man just doesn't have his stuff anymore. What is he doing? This is rude. I think it's Grafton. It could be Bartlett. It's a green and white team. Don't have it. You're done. Son of a bitch. I fucking have it. Tell me I don't I can still bring it. Yes. Time. All right, that's actually Bartlett versus Milbury, and it's Todd Deshane from I'm just glad I can be a role guy here. You can't get Worcester weather from a Boston TV station. The sun could be shining in downtown Boston, but the weather could be very different here in Worcester. People tell me all the time how much they count on our weather forecast, and we know how important that is to our Worcester News Tonight viewers. Each weekday, we'll give you your weather, your 10-day forecast for right here in Worcester, only on Worcester News Tonight. Worcester's only local forecast.
weeknights on Worcester News Tonight. Welcome back, everyone. Westboro winning game one of our championship or semifinal doubleheader here. They punched their ticket to the championship, 54-43. Kevin, what a game it was. Andy Lacombe is now standing by with the winners. Andy? All right, thanks, Kevin, with Coach. Uh, you know, you guys had to make a run in that second half. I heard you tell the guys you had a good third quarter, but you still had work to do. Can you take us through just the effort from your team in that fourth quarter? Uh, well, the effort on these guys, it's never questioned. You know, once in a while, execution comes into play and we don't execute, but the effort of these guys is just unbelievable. Um, you know, we knew that that was a good team coming in. We made a few switches there. They, we played them twice so far this season. They haven't seen us play zone once. We switched it up, and honestly, I think our zone in the second half, we extended it hard. We made sure we found out where one was and uh, just quite honestly took them out of the rhythm a little bit and I think it worked and once we were able to get Jack back in there to rebound, Jack kind of solidified things and uh, just super proud of the guys. Like I said, you know, we caught them off guard a little bit with what we switched up to and I'm just so happy with their effort. I mean, they fight so hard. We knew, I told the guys, one more punch, was, we, it was almost like a, like a title fight. One more punch and we might have been knocked out, but we avoided that one final punch and we were able to come back and we made some punches of our own and we were able to come out on top. To be able to go to a Clark final again with Westboro, to be able to get in that final, what does that mean to you, the town, the program, and the opportunity to have a play for a championship here? Uh, well, we talk about it all the time, how, how important it is to the town. We know that coming in, we, we are tied for the most appearances all time. So I try to really teach my guys the history of this. You know, we watched that video that they had from the 75th. I have my guys watch that. And they, they understand being here last year. I saw five juniors. They all played a lot last year. So they made that goal number one was to get back here, but not just get back here. They want to get to the title game. We're going to stick around and watch whoever wins this. But, um, yeah, we're, we're happy for the win, but we're, we're not we're not happy just to be here. We got one more ready to roll. So I'm very happy for the kids, very happy for the town, very happy with the school. Great job, Coach. We'll see you on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. Let's bring in uh, Matt Doherty, Jack Lentine, guys. You're back here. You're going to a championship Saturday here in the Clark Tournament. What did it take tonight? Yeah, Matt. It took a lot of defense. Our defense was great. It was a lot of communication, and we made it an emphasis in practice that our defense has got to be our offense. I think that's what we did tonight. Nice little finish for you there. And But uh, talk, take us through that fourth quarter. What did you guys have to do? You have to dig deep to come back and, and, and get, out, get on top of these guys. Yeah, I mean, we started the game off well, but uh, definitely – lost it in the halftime in the locker room we're all deadly silent and I feel like third quarter definitely the fourth quarter we came back and then once once the floodgates came loose everyone was so hyped and it was awesome all right you guys were young but you've been in an atmosphere like this before so what will it take on Saturday no matter who you play first of all we got to have fun whenever we have fun we're playing with each, well with each other like we're almost unstoppable but it's going to take again a lot of defense uh, no matter who we're playing we're going to have to box out rebound and defense just got to be the point of emphasis again all right fellas congratulations we'll see you on saturday night thank, thank you so much thank you so much nice job guys let's go over to kevin and kevin to wrap this one up all right thank you andy what a game what a game and, and i think brian willer said it it was like a great heavyweight fight with both teams giving their best shot to their opponent who could get up off the mat the most times and come back and deliver that knockout blow. No, I agree. And he also led us to believe, and certainly it came to fruition, and that was like Felix the Cat with his bag of tricks. He threw that 1-2-2, and he really believes, and it made a huge difference. They hadn't seen it in their two previous times. You know, they come away with an incredible comeback and an incredible run to yeah. win that ball game. It was a great game, no doubt about it. Westboro gets the win, so they punch their ticket to the large school championship on Saturday. Who are they going to face? Is it going to be Auburn or Shepherd Hill? Those two teams will decide it. That's game two of our doubleheader coming up next. But now let's throw it back to the Worcester News Tonight studios for a news update. <laughs> 